All right. So uh, my name is Alessandra. I'm a housing counselor at Habitat for Humanity East Bay Silicon Valley, and I'm your presenter today. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're excited. This is the first time. Um, this is our, a brand new presentation for us. So uh, we really hope you're going to enjoy it and get lots of great information. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to just go over some quick housekeeping. Um, in the next 48 hours, uh, we're, we're going to email you a link uh, to a workshop evaluation form. Now, this form is anonymous and is your opportunity to let us know what you thought of the workshop. Um, we do read them and your opinion really matters to us. So if you can please take a moment to fill it out and submit it, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, to make sure that you receive this email, if you're not logged in with your name, please rename yourself. And then this way we will be able to match you with the email you provided when you register. Um, if you don't know how to do that, uh, you can just click on participants uh, at the participants icon, icon at the bottom hover over uh, the mouse over your name, select more, then select rename, and you will now be able to type in your name. Um, today, we're also um, emailed you a webinar reminder that included handouts with helpful information and resources that are about today's topic. If you did not receive the email or if you were not able to download the um, handouts, please email us and um, we would be happy to email them to you again. And at the end of the presentation, we will have a slide with our contact information. Now, at the end of the presentation, we will uh, take time for Q&A. So I'm not going to stop throughout the presentation to answer questions, um, but feel free to use the chat box to write in your questions um, throughout the presentation and then at the, at the end, um, I will read the questions and, um, and answer them. Uh, and depending on how large our group is, uh, if it's, we stay small, small enough, then uh, maybe we can even uh, just uh, give you the chance to unmute yourself if you'd rather um, ask it out loud. Uh, we also would love to know how many people are joining us today. So if you can please write into the chat box how many participants from your households are attending this webinar? We would greatly appreciate it. So if you're sitting there in front of your computer and you've got other family members listening in with you, um, if you can just write in how many people are actually um, following, uh, that would be awesome. All right, um, so just a little bit about who we are and what we do. Uh, Habitat East Bay Silicon Valley is a nonprofit and we serve people in Alameda, Contra Costa and Santa Clara counties through three programs. Um, first, we offer affordable homeownership opportunities. We build new homes and renovate existing homes and then sell them at an affordable mortgage to qualified families with limited and moderate incomes. We also offer housing counseling services and through our owner occupied home repair services, our home preservation program provides grants and low interest loans for low-income homeowners throughout our service area. And just a little bit more about our uh, housing counseling program. It is approved, it's a HUD approved housing counseling program, HUD being the US Department of Housing and Urban Development, um, short HUD. Um, and our services include one-on-one -on -one counseling with a Habitat HUD certified housing counselor, now, this service is for anybody wanting to learn how to gain control over their personal finances, whether that means learning how to create a working household budget, manage debt, build savings, or repair and improve their credit history. And for those whose goal is homeownership, we also offer pre-purchase counseling um, to help them understand how the home buying process works and what they can do to become financially ready for homeownership. And we offer monthly financial education webinars like the one tonight uh, and on a wide range of topics from how to budget, how to understand credit reports and credit scores, how to manage debt, how to protect yourself from ID theft and pivot paths to homeownership and many more. And we are adding more and a uh, little plug in September, we're gonna be in it's up on our website. We're gonna uh, be presenting budgeting for the holidays. Um, that's a brand new one for us. So. Uh, if you're interested in that and learning strategies to not, you know, manage spending during the holidays, uh, please uh, go ahead and visit our events page and register. 
Um, we also teach the eight hour HUD approved first time on buyer class, and we offer a free online financial education center. Now this is a free online library of interactive lessons that you can take at your own pace and at your own time and they cover a variety of financial education topics. And at the end of the presentation, I'll tell you a little bit more about that as well. Uh, now today, uh, um, you know, we're going to be covering um, cash aid, social security and disability benefits, housing and living cost assistance, low cost healthcare services, employment assistance, unemployment insurance and resources for ages 60 and plus. Uh, now, if you need help meeting basic living expenses, you may qualify for benefits and programs that help cover food, housing, medical and other costs. And so what we will cover today will include, um, we'll give you um, a, you know, an idea of, um, there's a lot of help out there. Um, it's just a matter of knowing um, that the help is out there and how to connect to it. Uh, now we also have a quick disclaimer. Um, Habitat East Bay Silicon Valley makes no warranties or recommendations about any of the services or resources we will review today. The programs may change and you need to check with the individual organization for updates on the services they offer. Now, one of the handouts you received in the email and the reminder email lists all of the programs and services that we'll, uh, we will review today, as well as other resources. And the PDF uh, document includes links to their websites. Um, so make sure you do take a look. Um, each program has its own eligibility requirements. Today, we're gonna do a general review. So to know whether a program is for you, just click on the link. Um, to learn more about what it offers and what the eligibility requirements are. Now, before we get started, we would like to do a quick audience survey. We're going to launch a Zoom poll and we would greatly appreciate it if you could participate. The poll has four questions. And um, I just would like to point out that questions number three through four include a choose to not answer option. Um, so let me launch this poll and I'll just give you uh, about a minute a minute or two max to to work on this. Okay, we have about 60% uh, people participated. I'll just give you a few, a little bit, just a little bit more time in case people are still submitting their answers. And I do appreciate you um, participating. All right, we're almost there, a few more seconds. I don't want to cut anybody off. All right. All right. We're going to end the poll. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you um, participating. Okay. So, um, now, connecting to programs and assistance. Now, there are federal and state websites that help you connect to benefit programs and services. For example, benefits.gov is a U.S. Department of Labor website where you can find information on over a thousand government assistance programs, check your eligibility, and learn how to apply. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, um, is a federal agency that is responsible for national policy and programs that address America's housing needs, including enforcing fair housing laws. Now, on its website, you can look for rental assistance resources, as well as information and resources about other housing-related topics. My Benefits Calwin connects people to applications from medical, uh, for, sorry, from Medi-Cal, County Medical Services Programs, CalFresh and CalWorks. And on the California Department of Social Services or CDSS, 
uh, website, you can learn about benefits and services available in California, including assistance with paying energy bills and community services available to low income households. Now, there are also a lot of nonprofits and community organizations programs that offer assistance. Um, to connect to these programs and services, um, you can call 211. Uh, now, this is a 24 uh, hour, seven day a week confidential hotline that helps people connect to emergency services like food, shelter, rent, and utility payment assistance, legal services, income support, and employment. You can also visit your city and county website to look for programs and resources um, that are available to people who live within their boundaries. Um, the California Department of Community Services and Development's website can help you search for assistance, services, and programs in your area. And there are community organizations and networks that provide a list of resources. So for example, OneDegree.org is a free searchable database uh, where you can find up-to-date resources, including emergency services, food pantries, healthcare, housing, legal, employment, all kinds of um, great resources. Now, there are government and state assistance programs that help cover living expenses, including food, health care, and housing costs. Nonprofits and community agencies offer a variety of services for low-income households that include case management, emergency financial assistance, food, emergency housing support, and affordable rental housing programs. Many cities and counties have their own programs to help people who reside within their boundaries, for example, they partner with affordable housing providers to afford affordable housing opportunities to their residents, both for rent and for homeownership. And their website also provides helpful information about various local resources and programs that are available in the county and or city. Some cities and counties also have resource centers um, that you can visit in person. And they may or may not be open right now, um, obviously, but. Um, but they, they, you know, some cities do have them. Um, so cash aid benefits uh, are public assistance programs that help qualified low-income households pay for housing, food, utilities, and other necessary living expenses. Uh, CalWORKS is also known as the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, or TANF, and provides cash aid to eligible families that have children in the home to help cover living expenses. Now, eligibility requirements include income, assets, and other factors. The CalWORKS uh, Welfare to uh, Work Program is an employment and training program designed to promote self-sufficiency by helping recipients become employed. Anyone receiving CalWORKS aid must participate in the Welfare to Work Program unless they are exempt. Now, depending on the recipient situation, it helps with job placement, education, and training programs and pays for expenses like transportation to work and training costs. And finally, the CalWORKS Child Care Program helps parents who participate in the Welfare to Work Program access immediate short-term child care and pay for child care expenses. Uh, general relief, or also known as general assistance, provides relief and support to adults who are not supported by their own means. Um, other public funds or assistance programs. This program is funded at the county level, so eligibility requirements vary from county to county. Um, the Refugee Cash Assistance Program, or RCA, provides cash aid to refugees without children who are not eligible for any other cash aid. RCA also offers employment and social services to help refugees become self-sufficient. And the Cash Assistance Program for Immigrants, or CAPI, is a state-funded program that's designed to provide monthly cash benefits to aged, blind, and disabled non-citizens who are ineligible for SSI and SSB solely due to their immigrant status. And we'll, we will review SSI and SSB in a little bit. Um, Social Security is a program that benefits U.S. workers who contribute to the fund throughout their working lives. It provides replacement income for qualified retirees and their families and pays benefits to people who have already retired, people who are disabled, survivors of workers who have died, and dependents of beneficiaries. Now, Social Security pays a percentage of your pre-retirement income, and the monthly amount you receive depends on several factors, including your lifetime earnings and your age when you start collecting benefits. 
On average, retirement benef beneficiaries receive about 40% of their pre-retirement income. So you should not rely on social security payments as a retirement plan. Uh, social security is meant to supplement income, not replace it. Um, so to ensure a financially secure retirement, it is very important to start a retirement savings plan as early as possible using savings accounts like 401ks and IRAs. Now you can start collecting monthly payments as early as age 62 before your full retirement age or FRA. Now the year in which you were born uh, provides a rough estimate of your FRA. However, if you do um, uh, choose to start receiving payments earlier, um, your payments will be reduced. If you wait to collect them when you, full, uh, when you reach full retirement age, you will receive your full benefit amount. And again, depending on when you were born, but it's usually around 66 to 67 years old. If you choose to delay receiving benefits beyond your full retirement age, the benefit amount will increase until you turn 70. And then at age 70, the payment amount is maxed out and no longer increases. So there's no benefit in waiting any longer. Um, some family members may also qualify to receive benefits on the record of the person receiving retirement benefits. A spouse may be eligible if they're at least 62 years of age, even if they've never worked under Social Security. Biological adopted and stepchildren may qualify. And child's insurance benefits are available to children whose parents become disabled or dies. Um, and under certain circumstances, a stepchild, a grandchild, a step-grandchild or an adopted child may also be eligible. And finally, survivor benefits may be available to widows or widowers, um, divorced spouses, provided that the marriage lasted 10 years or more, and parents were 62 years or older and were dependent on the deceased for at least half of their support. Um, supplemental Security Income, or SSI, um, and Social Security Disability Insurance, or, or SSDI, are government-funded programs that are administered by the Social Security Administration, or SSA. Now, SSI provides minimum basic financial assistance to older adults and persons with disabilities who have very limited income and resources. Persons who qualify for SSI automatically qualify for Medicaid. Eligibility for SSDI is based on disability and work credits, not on limited income and resources. Now, this program provides benefits to workers who have made enough earnings contribution towards um, Social Security or whose spouse or parent has paid enough towards Social Security taxes and, and can no longer work due to physical and or mental reasons. Now, persons who qualify for SSDI qualify for Medicare. But to qualify, the applicant must be fully disabled, which means they cannot perform any kind of work duties for at least 12 months because of their medical condition. The application process is lengthy and it's hard to get approved. Um, there are social security attorneys and advocates that can help understand the SSDI application system and with any appeal process should the application be denied. Now, to keep in mind, the major difference between SSI and SSDI is that SSI's eligibility determination is based on age, disability, and limited income and resources, not on work history, whereas, whereas SSDI determination is based on disability and work history. And in some circumstances, an individual may qualify for both SSI and SSDI. Um, a state supplementary payment or SSP is a program that supplements SSI benefits. The state of California adds cash assistance benefits to the SSI federal payment to account for the state's higher cost of living. Just like SSI, eligibility is based on federal criteria. And if a person qualifies for SSI, they also qualify for SSP and may, may, be also, um, may also be eligible for um, CalFresh. Um, now, state disability benefits. Now, the California State Disability Insurance Program, or SDI, is a state program administered by the Employment Development Department, or EDD, and it provides two types of disability insurance. 
Um, disability insurance, or DI, offers short-term wage replacement benefits to eligible California workers who are unable to perform their regular work due to a non-work-related illness or injury, either physical or mental or pregnancy. Paid family leave, or PFL, provides partial wage benefits to employees who need to take time off from work to care for a seriously ill family member or to bond with a new child and workers who participate in a qualifying event or an essential need resulting from a family member's deployment. Workers' compensation, um, this is when you get hurt on the job. Uh, now your employer is required by law to pay for workers' compensation benefits. This includes um, getting hurt at work due to one event, uh, like hurting your back, back in a fall, or repeated exposure like losing hearing because of constant loud noise. Other benefits can include medical care to help recover, temporary disability benefits if you lose wages because your injury prevents you from doing your job while recovering, and permanent disability benefits if you don't recover completely. It can also include vocational rehabilitation benefits and death benefits. Now the Division of Workers' Compensation or DWC monitors the administration of California workers' compensation claims. Um, your employer must give um, or uh, mail a claim form to the injured worker within one working day after learning about the injury or illness. Um, the form can also be downloaded from the DWC website. Affordable housing programs are offered by the government, nonprofits, cities, and counties. Unfortunately, here in the Bay Area, Bay Area, there just isn't enough affordable housing to meet the demand. Um, but don't let this, that discourage you from searching and applying or even just adding your name to any open list uh, or open wait list. Uh, below market rate or BMR units do become available and there are new housing developments being built to help meet the demand. The housing voucher program is also known as Section 8, and it's the federal government's program for assisting very low-income families, the elderly and the disabled afford decent, safe, and sanitary housing in the private market. Now, to apply for this program, you need to contact your local public housing agency or PHA. Many Section 8 wait lists are closed, but it's always worth it to check your local PHA's website to learn about their wait list status. And if it is open, even if the wait list is long, it is always a good idea to add your name to it. If your name is not on it, you for sure don't have a chance to um, get called. There are also various nonprofits organizations that build housing developments and rent the units at an affordable rate. Also cities and counties require, well, not all of them, but many do, uh, require, um, I would say most of them, uh, require private developers to designate a percentage of the units they build at below market rates for people who live or work within their boundaries. Now, the best way to learn about local affordable housing opportunity is to visit um, your city and county website. And you can also visit the California Department of Housing and Community Development, or HCD, for a directory of affordable housing developments by county and HUD.gov for, resource for um, a resource locator that helps you find affordable housing resources near you. Now, there are two types of housing choice voucher programs, the tenant-based voucher and the project-based voucher. Under the tenant-based programs, the public housing agency issues an eligible family voucher and the family then selects a unit of its choice from a property owner willing to participate in the Section 8 program. If the family moves out of the unit, the contract with the owner ends and the family can move with continued assistance to another unit. Eligibility is determined by an income limit that is set based on where you live and the size of your household. In addition, the property owner may set other requirements. Under the project-based voucher program, a public housing agency enters into an assistance contract with the owner for a specified unit in a building designated as Section 8. Now, the PHA uh, refers families from its waiting list uh, to the project owner to fill vacancies. And because the assistance is tied to the unit, a family who moves out does not have any right to continued housing assistance. However, they may be eligible for a tenant-based voucher when one becomes available. 
Um, there are nonprofit housing developers like Midpen Housing, um, Bridge Housing, um, and EA, EA, EAH Housing that build affordable housing. This means that people who qualify for one of their units make a monthly housing payment that is affordable to them. Many have properties across the Bay Area and some even across California. They typically serve the low income population and have income limits requirements. Also some of the locations may be just for families or people 55 or older and people with disabilities. And some affordable housing programs also offer homeownership opportunities. Uh, for example, Habitat for Humanity is an example of an organization that builds and sells home at an affordable mortgage to qualify families with limited and moderate income. So it's an example of a homeownership um, uh, below market rate or affordable homeownership um, housing opportunities. Um, there are programs that help uh, people who are at risk of falling behind on rent with one-time rent assistance and may also offer rent deposit assistance. Nonprofits and community services agencies offer these services and to connect to a program near your, you can call 211. And of course, right now there's a whole rental assistance for um, people who were impacted by the COVID pandemic. And, um, uh, you know, check out the California state website uh, for information on how to apply. Uh, but there's, um, a, there's money available uh, for people to apply to uh, be able to get assistance to pay uh, back rent. Um, the, um, the HUD VASH program is a collaboration between HUD and the Veteran Administration or VA and is available to veterans and their families who are homeless. Um, HUD provides rental assistance vouchers for privately owned housing and then the VA case managers connect um, them to support services. Now, additionally, a VA subsidy called the Shallow Subsidy Initiative helps low-income veterans afford housing in high rent areas, uh, for sure, the Bay Area, by providing them with a fixed rental subsidy for up to two years. Um, so connecting to emergency housing. Now, coordinated entry access points like public housing agencies, emergency shelters, Community services agencies and nonprofit organizations connect people who are unhoused or at risk of becoming unhoused to emergency housing. Many of these organizations work uh, focuses on helping them connect to emergency shelters and ultimately transition to permanent housing. And they also may provide food, clothing, medical care, and help with finding living wage jobs. Now, the best way to find the closest access point is to call 211. Once connected, the agency completes an intake process that determines which services and housing program best fits the individual situation. Um, the information then is entered into a secure database that's used by participating agencies to communicate with each other about a person's case. Now, the program works on a first come first serve basis and those who are the most vulnerable and the most in need will be connected to available housing programs first. Persons whose needs do not match the services provided by a housing program are then referred to other services. Um, the CalWORKs Housing Support Program offers CalWORKs families that are experiencing homelessness or are, are at risk of becoming homeless, financial assistance and housing related support services like rental assistance, housing search, case management, um, security deposits, utility payments, moving costs, hotel and motel vouchers, legal services, and also um, credit repair. And you would want to contact your local um, social services office. Uh, many utility providers offer programs to assist households when they cannot pay their bills on time. Companies may offer a payment plan or a temporary discount on your bill if you can pay some, but not all of what you owe. Some companies also work with local nonprofits to provide additional financial assistance to qualifying households. Um, so you would wanna contact your utility provider, explain your situation and ask about options to help you pay. The California Lifeline program helps lower uh, phone bill costs by providing qualified households discounts on home phone and cell phone services. Some people also qualify for free phones uh, and to apply, you would need to contact your local telephone company. Uh, people who are eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, CalFresh, SSI, and below market rate housing programs may qualify for affordable high-speed internet service. Um, and AT&T and Comcast both offer their own program. 
Some nonprofits and community services agencies also offer one-time utility payment assistance, and you can call 211 to connect the programs in your area. And depending on your household income, you may qualify for discounted water service. Uh, if shut off of your water services is imminent, you may also be eligible to arrange a bill payment plan. So contact your water utility company to see if you qualify and to sign up. Um, the California so, uh, Energy Bill Payment Assistance, the California Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program is a federally funded program that helps eligible low income households cover their energy costs through bill payment assistance, weatherization and energy efficiency repairs. And it provides one time financial assistance to help pay a bill and assistance in a crisis that could be deemed potentially life threatening like a utility disconnection. In addition to help with paying the energy bill, this program offers free energy upgrades to help lower the utility bills and improve health and safety. And local community services agencies help with the application process. And again, to find one near you, call 211. Uh, the CARE program uh, gives low income uh, customers a discount on their electric bill and natural gas bill. And people who are enrolled in public assistance programs may also be eligible. And FARA is an energy discount program that's for households whose income slightly exceeds the care allowances. Um, and to see if you qualify for one of these programs, contact your utility company. And pg and &E offers its own programs that can help save money and energy alike, uh, like uh, one-time energy credit for up to $300, longer term assistance, like your budget billing plan. Uh, and that averages out your annual energy cost over the last 12 months to determine a monthly payment amount. Uh, they also offer payment arrangements where you can spread out your owed balance over several months or get a payment extension. They have an arrearage management plan to help you pay unpaid bills balances. And medical baseline is for consumers who rely on life support equipment or those who have life-threatening illnesses or compromised immune system. The program is not income-based and consumers are billed for natural gas and electricity use at the utility company's lowest residential rate. Um, CalFresh is also known as the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP. Um, that's what it used to be called. This program helps qualified low-income people cover food costs. Um, as mentioned earlier, SSI and SSB benefit recipients may also be eligible. Um, and there was just an announcement that um, the government has, I believe it's been approved, um, to increase the amount, uh, the benefit amount for CalFresh uh, because um, they realized it just was not covering um, food, uh, food costs uh, so, uh, adequately. So they've increased the, um, the benefit amount. Um, the Women, Infants and Children Program or WIC is a free supplemental nutrition program that assists families, pregnant women, new mothers, infants and children up to the age of five. WIC participants get access to supplemental nutritious foods nutrition education and counseling at WIC clinics, screening and referrals to other health, welfare, and social services. And the California uh, Food Assistance Program, or CFAP, is for qualified non-citizens or legal permanent residents and who do not qualify for federal uh, benefits. Uh, to get assistance covering your food costs, food banks provide free healthy food to anyone in need at food distribution sites. The food bank is the food warehouse. And then they distribute it to food pantries, which in turn distribute the food to their community. Um, and to learn where the closest food distribution site is, you can contact your local food bank. Um, and also food banks and food pantries offer programs that feed kids even when school is not in session and provide baby food, formula, and non-food staples like diapers. Um, and they can also um, often also assist with CalFresh applications. Um, the Volunteer Tax Assistance Program, uh, sorry, Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program, or uh, VITA, offers free tax help for assistance with filling out tax forms and is available to low-income households, persons with disabilities, and limited English-speaking taxpayers. VITA sites are generally located at community and neighborhood centers, libraries, and schools. 
Uh, clothes closets provide low-income families with free clothes, including shoes, winter jackets, um, school supplies, and work uniform. Um, these charities operate in most major cities and towns, so check your city um, or county. You can also call 211 to find a location near you. And there are nonprofit organizations that offer free computers to eligible low-income households and programs that offer them at low cost. And you can also ask your employer or school and school. Um, many have programs that provide free or discounted laptops to their employees and students. There are services and programs that provide low or no cost health insurance coverage. Cover California is a state free service that connects Californians with brand name health insurance. Any Californian can get health insurance through Cover California if they are a state resident and cannot get affordable health insurance through a job. Medi-Cal and Cover California use the same application. Now this means that once you apply through Cover California, you'll find out which program you qualify for. Medi-Cal is California's Medicaid healthcare program. It's a free or low cost public assistance, uh, public health, sorry, a low cost public health insurance program that provides healthcare services for low income families, um, seniors, persons with disabilities, children in foster care, pregnant women, and certain low income adults. And applications can be submitted through your local county services office um, by mail or online through Cover California. The IHSS program helps pay for services to help California residents who get Medi-Cal and are over 65, disabled or blind, remain safely, safely in their home. Disabled children may also be eligible for IHSS. Um, the types of services which can be authorized through IHSS are house cleaning, meal preparation, laundry, grocery shopping, personal care services, help with getting to medical appointments and protective supervision for the mentally impaired. Now, most people get services free of charge. A social worker assists eligible people in finding a care provider, which may be a family member, a friend, a neighbor, or a registered IHSS provider. People who are approved for IHSS must hire the provider, who will then perform the authorized services and are responsible for training and supervising the person they hire. Essentially, they're the employer. Um, the Children's Health Insurance Program, or, Ch or CHIP, is a state-run program that provides low-cost health, um, dental, and uh, vision insurance coverage to children and families that earn too much money to qualify for Medi-Cal. Uh, Medicare is the federally funded health insurance program that helps cover the cost of health care for people 65 or older and certain people under 65 with disabilities. Part A helps with uh, pay for inpatient care. For example, in a hospital or a skilled nursing facility following a hospital stay. And then Part B helps cover doctor's visits and preventative services. Um, and then Part D, that um, helps cover cost of prescription uh, drugs. Um, the Medicare Savings Program, or MSP, provides qualified people help from the state paying the Medicare premiums. Um, in some cases, it may also pay deductibles and um, co-payments. Um, community health centers, also known as low-cost clinics, are community-driven nonprofit clinics located in medically underserved areas or serving populations that are medically underserved. Um, they offer a variety of low-cost services where payment is determined on the person's ability to pay. Services include medical, dental, vision, and behavioral health care. Uh, Rotocare Bay Area is a nonprofit that hosts free medical clinics throughout the greater Bay Area where volunteer medical professionals provide free healthcare services to uninsured persons who have limited abilities to pay for medical care. There are also a uh, prescription drug savings program. Uh, Medicare Extra Help is for Medicare beneficiaries of limited resources and income and pays for monthly premiums, annual deductibles, and co-payments related to Medicare Part D. Prescription drug programs from government agency, uh, agencies and pharmaceutical companies can help you pay for prescription drugs. And to find programs, you can contact uh, the pharmaceutical companies, the California Department of Social Services, and local health centers. Um, Rx Assist is a nationally recognized web-based medication assistance resource center. And you can use their database to locate savings for prescription drugs. 
And if paying for medicines is a problem, um, do talk with your doctor. Um, ask if a generic medicine can be used instead of a brand name drug or whether there is a similar drug that is less expensive. Now the doctor's office also can serve as a valuable resource for patients um, for um, things like informing them about the Medicare prescription drug benefit, um, signing application forms for patients assistance uh, programs and referring patients to state sponsored services and community assistance programs. So talk to your doctor if you're um, struggling to keep up with your uh, medicine costs. Now, there are various resources and programs that can help people find a job or increase their earning potential. Some offer uh, free career training, uh, pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship programs in high demand fields. Um, these programs are typically, uh, typically also offer help with job search, like resume writing, interview coaching, um, and workshops. They also partner with local employers to help provide um, job resources and recruitment events. Now, career training programs provide hands-on instruction. Pre-apprenticeship programs prepare individuals, individuals to enter and succeed in a registered apprenticeship program. And then apprenticeship is an earn and learn program uh, that provides workers with income while they learn on the job. Uh, American Job Centers of California are also known as one-stop career centers. They bring employment and training program services into one place, and they partner with local employers to help people connect to jobs. Um, services include help with creating a personalized plan, um, resume review, interview coaching, um, skill building workshops, and finding professional, uh, professional certificate training opportunities. There are also many websites where you can search for jobs like Indeed.com, Monster, and Glassdoor. Just make sure you don't have to pay fees. It should not cost you anything to apply for jobs. Um, job fairs are an opportunity for job seekers to speak directly to employers that might have job openings. They can be in person or online. And some have employers from a variety of industries. Others are smaller and more targeted to a particular audience. Um, and to find them, just Google job fairs near me or contact your local one-stop career center. You can also contact an employment agency. I mean, we all know about those, but some work with employers who want to fill full-time positions, but um, some match workers with short-term or temporary to, to permanent positions. And when you finish a short-term work assignment, the agency looks for another assignment for you. Now, these types of jobs can earn you money while you look for permanent work. Um, you also gain skills and work experience, uh, which can add to your resume. And sometimes employers offer permanent positions to temp workers. So um, if you're looking and having a hard time looking, finding a full-time job, this is a great um, way to um, kind of earn, earn income while you do that. And it could lead to full-time work. Um, the, now, the federal government offers many job opportunities for a wide variety of jobs. Um, here are some websites that can help you search for these types of jobs. On the usajobs.gov, you can find government job opportunities. Uh, to look for California state jobs, you, go, uh, you can go to calcareers.ca.gov. Uh, calops.org is for people who want to apply for public sector jobs in California. And edjoin.org is for people who want to apply for jobs in the education field. And again, um, most of these, uh, I would say all of these are anything we're covering is on that handout with those links. So, um, so that you can go and take a look and learn more, more in depth about all these things, uh, resources. Now, people who are out of work or have had their hours reduced may be eligible to receive unemployment insurance benefits when filing for UI benefits. The worker must have earned enough wages during the base period to establish a claim and be totally or partially unemployed, unemployed through no fault of their own, physically able to work, available for work, and ready and willing to accept work immediately. Now, if they quit, they must prove good cause for quitting. If they're fired, the employer must prove there was misconduct. Either party can disagree with the decision and file an appeal. Unemployment insurance recipients may qualify for California Training Benefits, or CTB, which allow them to continue education, upgrade skills, or learn a new trade while receiving UI benefits. Now, UI, uh, UI recipients who are approved for CTB are excused from the requirements that they must be available for work, 
actively seek work and accept work while they complete the education, upgrade their skills, or learn a new trade. And they also may be eligible for a training extension, which provides additional weeks of benefits while they complete their school or training. And here are some resources and programs for people who are 60 years or older. Um, the Elder Care Locator is a public service that helps connect older adults and their families to housing and other services like health insurance, benefit programs, and transportation. Um, the Health Insurance Counseling and Advocacy Program, or HICAP, offers free confidential one-on-one -on -one counseling, education, and assistance on Medicare. Their volunteer counselors can help you understand the beneficiary's rights and healthcare options. Um, benefitscheckup.org is a free online service uh, uh, of the National Council on Aging that helps find a list of programs near you that can help pay for medications, healthcare, utilities, and more. The Senior Community Service Employment Program provides training for low-income unemployed seniors. Participants also have access to employment assistance through American Job Centers. Um, participants work an average of 20 hours a week and they're paid the highest of federal, state, or local minimum wage. Um, tax Counseling for the Elderly, or TCE, provides free tax help for, to individuals who are 60 years or older. And Meals on Wheels supports community-based programs across the U.S. that are dedicated to addressing senior isolation and hunger. And this network serves virtually every community in America, and it provides friendly visits and safety checks to seniors, as well as some delivery of free or low-cost nutritious meals. All right, well, we are at the end of our presentation, but before we start the Q&A, we would like uh, uh, to remind you that uh, we're gonna send that email within 48 hours with the link to the workshop evaluation. Again, this is your opportunity to give your feedback about today's presentation. It is anonymous, so um, make sure just, uh, but to make sure you receive this email if you haven't um, changed your name uh, to match what's the name on the registration that you use for registration, please do so now. Uh, now it's really, it's really simple. You're gonna get this link. So to complete the form, you just click on the workshop evaluation form link um, that's provided in the email. You complete the form and you click submit. Uh, now the email will also include two links, uh, one to our events page where you can find upcoming workshops uh, or webinars right now, and the other to our, to our online financial education center. Again, we schedule two webinars per month on a variety of financial education topics. So check out our, our events page um, regularly to see what's coming up and September webinars are already. Uh, one is gonna be on ID theft and scams and the other is gonna be on budgeting for the holidays. And as promised a little bit more about our online financial education center. This is a free resource that's available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week from your computer, mobile or tablet. It features a robust library of playlists that cover personal finance topics like budgeting, retirement planning, home ownership, banking basics, loans, credit reports and credit scores, and more. You're also able to create a personalized playlist that's tailored to your unique financial goals and priorities. So you do just do a quick account setup. Um, and once you do, you gain access to a series of lessons that be, can be completed in just three to 10 minutes. Um, they're all self-based, they're interactive, and they provide a fun and engaging experience. And um, we encourage you to uh, check it out. It's completely free and available to you anytime. Um, all right, so I'm going to work. Uh, let's see, we're going to do the q and I'm going to stop the recording.